The Avro Canada CF-105 Aero II, a supersonic interceptor developed in the 1950s, remains one of the most celebrated and mourned chapters in Canadian aviation history. Designed by Avro Canada to meet the Royal Canadian Air Force's RCAF need for a high-performance aircraft to counter Soviet bomber threats during the Cold War, the Aero was a technological marvel that promised to place Canada at the forefront of aerospace innovation. Tragically, the program was cancelled in 1959, leaving behind a legacy preserved in part by the Canada Aviation and Space Museum, part of Ingenium, which houses the aircraft's nose section and other artifacts. In the 1950s, Cold War tensions drove Canada to seek a supersonic interceptor to replace the subsonic Avro CF-100 Canuck as Soviet bombers threatened North America via Arctic routes. The RCAF's 1953 specification demanded a twin-engine two-crew aircraft capable of Mach 1.5 at 50,000 feet. Avro Canada, based in Malton, Ontario, began developing the CF-105 Aero in 1955. The first prototype flew in 1958, reaching Mach 1.9. However, cost overruns and political pressures led Prime Minister John Diefenbaker to cancel the program on February 20, 1959, known as Black Friday. With all aircraft and blueprints destroyed, devastating Canada's aerospace industry. The CF-105 Aero II was a masterpiece of engineering, designed to dominate the skies with cutting-edge technology. The aircraft measured 77 feet 9 inches in length, with a wingspan of 50 feet and a height of 20 feet 6 inches. Its empty weight was 49,040 pounds, with a maximum takeoff weight of 68,605 pounds. Powered by two Pratt & Whitney J75P3 engines in the Mark I, it reached Mach 1.9. The planned Mark II with two Orenda Iroquois PS-13 engines was projected to hit Mach 3. The aircraft could cruise at Mach 1.5 at 50,000 feet, reach a service ceiling of 60,000 feet, and climb to that altitude in just five minutes from engine start. Its delta-wing design and pioneering fly-by-wire system optimized high-speed performance. Compared to modern fighters, the Aero's speed was impressive. The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, a current multi-role stealth fighter, achieves a maximum speed of Mach 1.6. The Aero Mark I's Mach 1.9 was about 19% faster, while the projected Mark II's Mach 3 would have been 87.5% faster, almost twice as fast as the F-35 Lightning II. This highlights the Aero's focus on raw speed as an interceptor, contrasting with the F-35's emphasis on stealth and versatility. The Aero's delta-wing, tailless design was a key innovation, reducing wave drag at supersonic speeds while providing ample space for fuel and avionics. Its fly-by-wire system, one of the earliest of its kind, offered precise control, making it a pioneer in flight technology. The Aero was designed to carry advanced air-to-air -air missiles in an internal weapons bay, reflecting the Aero's shift from guns to guided munitions. The original plan paired the RCA Victor Astra fire control system with the U.S. Navy's Sparrow II missile, but both systems faced developmental challenges. Avro proposed using the more reliable Hughes MX-1179 system with Falcon missiles to reduce costs, but the RCAF insisted on the Astra-Sparrow combination. The production Aero was expected to carry up to eight Sparrow II missiles or a mix of other guided weapons, such as the Canadian-developed Velvet Glove missile, which was also cancelled. The absence of guns limited its flexibility for close-range combat, but the focus on missiles aligned with its role as a high-altitude interceptor targeting distant bombers. The CF-105 Aero was tailor-made for Canada's unique challenges. Its long range and high-speed capabilities were ideal for patrolling Canada's vast, sparsely populated northern territories, where Soviet bombers posed a direct threat via Arctic routes. 
The aircraft's ability to operate from 6,000-foot runways suited Canada's remote airfields, and its rapid climb rate ensured quick responses to incoming threats. As a nearly 100% Canadian-made aircraft, from its airframe to its engines, the Aero symbolized national pride and technological independence, showcasing Canada's ability to compete with global aerospace powers. Economically, the program bolstered Canada's industrial base, employing thousands and fostering innovation. Strategically, the Aero's missile-based armament and high-altitude performance were perfect for countering the Soviet bomber threat, offering human judgment and recalibility that missiles like the Bomark lacked. Its large airframe held potential for adaptation into roles like reconnaissance, enhancing its utility for Canada's diverse defense needs. The Aero's cancellation was a missed opportunity to maintain Canada's aerospace leadership, making its fit for the nation all the more poignant in hindsight. The Aero's fly-by-wire and delta-wing design were revolutionary, earning praise from Soviet scientists visiting Avro in 1958. Its 1957 rollout coincided with Sputnik 1's launch, overshadowing its debut. Nine one-eighth scale models, launched over Lake Ontario to test the design, are now being recovered by the Raise the Arrow project for museum display. The cancellation laid off 14,500 Avro workers, with many joining NASA's Apollo program. Conspiracy theories suggest a prototype was flown to the UK or that the CIA influenced the cancellation to protect US interests, though these remain unproven. The Canada Aviation and Space Museum preserves the nose section, undercarriage legs, engines, wingtips, and memorabilia, keeping the Aero's legacy alive. The Avro Canada CF-105 Aero 2 was more than an aircraft. It was a symbol of Canada's ambition and ingenuity. Its advanced specifications, innovative design, and tailored weaponry made it a formidable interceptor, perfectly suited to Canada's vast geography and Cold War role. The artifacts at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum stand as a testament to its potential, while the story of its cancellation continues to spark debate and fascination. The Arrow was Canada's chance to soar among the world's aerospace elite, and its loss remains a haunting reminder of what might have been.